Welcome to the Transform My Dance Studio podcast. Over the coming weeks, as your dance studio starts to navigate the changes impacting our industry, we are delighted to be giving you exclusive access to some of our best sessions in the Dance Studio Owners Association. We hope you find this episode valuable. And for more support and resources specifically for dance studio owners, please make sure to join our free Facebook group, the Dance Studio Owners Hub. Hey everyone, good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Clint here, founder of the Dance Studio Owners Association. Oh my goodness, so many amazing faces, so many amazing faces. Good to see lots of familiar faces here. Nice to see some new faces as well. Uh, wow, what, a, what an incredible four weeks it's been, right guys? Hasn't it just been insane? Uh, I feel like we have been on a on a roller coaster. Anyone else had those moments of like, I've got this to like crying in the corner, like on a ball on your floor. Yeah. Every, everyone has gone through that. Uh, the last four months we've seen it a lot, uh, you know, inside of the hub, most of you are probably in, are members of our hub. We have DSOA members here. We have the inner circle members here. Uh, last week I did 40, I think I did 46 calls last week. So I feel like I'm well and truly in sync with what is going on uh, for everyone at the moment. And what I wanted to do is really just provide some time for us to connect and also time for you to ask your, uh, your burning questions that you might have. Uh, so if you do have a camera, uh, I know for some of you it's early. Well, it shouldn't be that early. Well, I know I can see Nats here from Australia. I know, guys, it's, uh, it's late for... It's late for you guys, you Aussies that are joining us, but uh, everyone else uh, here, in, here in the US, you sh your camera should be on. We don't need makeup. Uh, 3 a.m., sorry, no camera. That's okay. That's 3 a.m. Only if it's 3 a.m., you're allowed to have no camera. Uh, but yeah, really great for you to be here. My mission for today is for us to get through as many questions um, as possible. Uh, I want to let you know that I don't have all the answers. Uh, so before we get started, uh, I don't I don't know everything. I don't claim to know everything. Uh, you know, what I love is this community has so much knowledge and wisdom inside of it. Uh, those of you that, uh, you know, have been in the hub, that are members of the hub or DSOA or in a circle, you know how powerful the community is and how much incredible knowledge there is in that. So uh, I don't have all the answers, but I am going to do my best today. Uh, you know, a little bit of, of what's going on and what I see going on, having access to the 34,000 studios that we get to talk to every single week, um, is that there is, you know, there's a lot of fear at the moment. Uh, a lot of you have closed down your studios and have opened the doors to your virtual studios. Um, which is fantastic. I do want, I say, I've been saying this a lot on my calls. I do want everyone to realize how lucky we are that we can still operate our business. It is not in the same form that we intended. Uh, we don't have those smiling faces coming through our doors every single day, but we do get to provide a service. And I think when we gain perspective, it's really powerful. You know, I have friends who literally have had to close their doors, have had to say goodbye to all of their team members because they don't, they don't have a version of their business that they can run online, right? So we are very lucky and I think perspective is important, especially on those days where like everything's going wrong, right? You're like, could this day get like any worse at the moment? Um, just, just be thankful, in a, have a moment to be thankful that, you know, there is still a remnant that there's, there's a piece of your business that is still working and it is affecting, you know, children and adults all over, all over the world. Um, so it is important to, to remember that. Um, you know, I do believe though, that this is going to knock, knock out some businesses. You know, I do believe that there'll probably be 25 to 30% of dance studios that won't survive this, unfortunately. Um, and I, I like to be optimistic. I'm an optimistic, energetic person, but we we got to be real here. And, and we've had some heartbreaking emails and Facebook messages 
over the last couple of weeks of people who who just have had to shut down like they've had no other option they've tried you know maybe they've tried to do online maybe they just were like I don't have the energy to do this and they've closed down their business and we're going to see more of that happening my goal at DSOA is for us to help uh, that not happen uh, and so we want as many studios to be still alive at the end of this and so our goal is to keep you surviving through this period and really being able to then take part in the rebound that will happen. Because I'm a big believer that with everyone being locked inside, I think there's going to be a huge surge in people wanting to come back into a dance studio when we're able to, but also when the public feel comfortable doing that. And there's a lot of things out of our hands at the moment around around that piece. Uh, but we can we can kind of talk a little bit more about it. Um, I am not going to be answering any funding questions today. So if you have questions around PPP or the stimulus packages in Canada or Australia or New Zealand, uh, I am not a CPA. I am not an accountant. I am not a banker. I am not a tax attorney. Uh, so I won't be answering any questions specific to that because there is plenty of information around on those things. Um, so I won't be talking about any of the loan specific things. And also because my focus is like getting you beyond the eight weeks that the loan is going to give you, right? Like the loan is a great short term solution, but we need to be thinking about your business model. We need to be thinking about how you're retaining your students. We need to think about um, looking at things like your payroll and those expenses that aren't actually helping you and aiding you get through this period. Uh, those are the things that we want to focus on. So I think the loans and the stimulus packages, all those things are fantastic. You should do your research. You should be applying for those things. But, you know, they're, they're only going to support you for a short amount of time. And so what you need to be thinking about is what is the business model that I'm running? How am I keeping our students engaged? Uh, and they're the questions that, uh, that I want to jump into today. I said, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not an accountant. I'm not a CPA. I'm not an insurance broker. I've got a bunch of thoughts. This is my, dis my disclaimer. I got a bunch of thoughts that I want to give you today. Um, but you should run any of this advice by a professional before you implement it. Um, Last week alone, we ran 16 calls for our Inner Circle members. And here's what I know for sure. Things are changing every day. You know, uh, we could have another one of these calls tomorrow and it could be completely different or in a week and it could be completely different. And so I want to encourage you to stay connected to your communities, your studio owner communities that you're a part of. And what I love is this community has come together so fiercely, so passionately. You guys are helping each other like all the time, which is incredible. And I love that. And uh, please keep doing that because I think together we will be able to get through this. But, you know, it's it's going to take a lot. It, it's going to take a lot. And it's going to take everyone showing up to support each other. And I have no doubt that everyone here is is ready to do that. Um all right, so how today is going to work from a Q&A standpoint is oh, I've got a lot of people coming in saying hello, someone's from Greece, what's going on? Hey, Amy, hey, Natalie, Claudia is here, Michelle is here. Uh, we have, cool, we have just over 100 people here live on the call. Nice to see so many. Of you. I have five screens of faces um, to look at. So I'm definitely not feeling like I'm in quarantine at the moment. I feel like I'm at a really... Uh, I was going to say a really fun party. I mean, let's just call it a party. It's probably not going to be super fun. But I'm going to try and give you uh, as much value as possible. So if you have a question for me today, how I want, I've had a couple of pre-submitted questions, uh, but not too many because I wanted to kind of do this live. If you have a question, can you just type your question into the chat? So type your question as best you can into the chat for me. And then my plan is to answer as many questions as possible. Uh, I will also uh, unmute you if I need more clarification. Please don't be scared about that. Um, but if I have no idea what your question means, uh, I am going to unmute you so we can talk about it. So start putting your questions into the chat and I am going to start going through some of our pre-submitted questions. Okay, question one that we had. With the uncertainty of end-of-year recitals happening, I would love to know your recommendation on how to handle recital costumes when they're being fully bought and paid for 
uh, and you've already charged your families? Do you try to push recital to the fall and hope that students help uh, and hope that students like stick around? Or do you try to return the costumes to the costume companies and refund um, the charges to your family? Great question. Uh, I've answered this question quite a bit over the last couple of weeks. Um, and just remember that these are just my thoughts. These are my thoughts. So uh, firstly, I would say no. You do not want to uh, send the costumes back to the costume companies and get a refund, and you don't want to refund your customers. So I know some of you have recitals that are happening, were meant to happen in May. Maybe some of you are scheduled for June and some of you are scheduled for July. The advice that I'm sharing is, uh, especially for those that are in June and July, is we don't have any information yet that is going to say that you can't have some type of recital. And so what you should be doing at the moment is you want to buy some time. Guys, unfortunately, there is so much that's unknown and we really can't be making any big decisions more than like two weeks out of anything at the moment. And I know that this is frustrating. I know we like to have control and, and have all of the answers. But at the moment, I want to encourage you from not making any big big decisions around things more than two weeks out. So when it comes to recital, if you, would, if you have a recital planned in May, we can probably say right now that that recital would not be happening. You, your venue has probably told you that or maybe you have made a, a decision internally. You then have a decision to make around when you want to run recital. And we've tossed up a couple of different ideas in the IC, which I'll share with you. So the first one is that you may want to push it back into the summer. So you may want to look at something around July. Again, we're not going to know that that can happen, but you should be reaching out to all of your venues and seeing if they will give you hold on a number of different dates. I'd be looking for a July date. I'd be looking for an end of September date, and I'd be looking at an October date as well. Now, you're probably going to say, well, Clint, like that's in my new season. Uh, you know, you want us to do a recital for this current year, but it's going to be in the new season. Yes, yes, that's that's exactly what I'm suggesting to you is that you still have, you, you are promising a recital in 2020. You can't guarantee when it is going to happen at the moment, uh, but you want to tell your families that something will be happening. We've talked about like outside outside versions of recitals. We've talked about like online recitals where the kids get to like wear their costume and perform it for their families on Zoom. Like we've talked about lots of different options for recital, but I think everyone wants to have a performance this year. It may just not be the one that we thought we were going to give. So being flexible around that is important, but I would not be refunding the costumes. I would not be sending them back to the costume companies. I would be keeping them. And my line is always, you can cut the costume up right down the middle at the back. You can add some more lycra if the kids grow, right? We, we can make that work because everyone's excuse to me is like, they're clean, the kids grow so quickly. And I'm like, we'll make it work. We'll put one costume on one arm and the other costume on the other arm. Like we will make this work somehow. And so it's just getting creative around the solutions uh, that you can come up with. So um, that's kind of my feedback on that. Guys, if you've got any other questions around this, I'll, I'll try and get to them, but I, I want to answer them as, as kind of quickly as possible. So another question we've had is uh, I have I run a, a dance studio working with adults. Uh, I currently have a Facebook group where people are sent from a web page and they get to uh, join us in a Facebook group and they get like access to free classes, uh, free work, free fun videos, uh, a live stream for 10 minutes a day, so it's all free. Uh, we're wondering with Corona, uh, should we be putting our paid people into a separate group? So, yes. So, guys, if you've got, like, free uh, – I'm going to answer this question broadly because I've seen a lot of this. If you're running, like, free dance classes, firstly, I want to say uh, be very careful if you're running free dance classes. Uh, I'm okay if you want to run, like, one – free class on like Instagram, like an Instagram live or a Facebook live or something like once a week, that's okay. But you want to look after your paying, your paying customers. So you might have a free group of people that are consuming your content because you're warming them up to become a paid member of your studio, but make sure you've got a closed Facebook, uh, Facebook group community 
for your paying customers, right? For your paying customers, it's similar. Some of you are in our hub. The hub is our free group. We have nearly 10,000 studio owners in that. And then we have our paid programs, DSOA and Inner Circle. And that's where we're doing, you know, 90% of our work is inside of that. So the same for you, for this person that's asked this question. I don't have your name. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, have your free group still where you're producing bits of content, but really double down on the, on the paid stuff. Uh, that is most important. Uh, okay, cool. So let me see what has uh, come through here. Um, what do you suggest we do in the event we cannot contact our landlord? We have called several times and are sent to voicemail. Michelle, how rude. Uh, yeah, so I've heard this, I've heard this a couple of times. So if you have called them, if you have texted them, if you have, you know, if you have emailed them, um, you know, it's hard because I don't, you probably don't know where they live and you really don't want to like go over to anyone's house at the moment either. Um, Michelle, I'm going to unmute you. I can see, I can see someone nodding and smiling and then I look and it is Michelle. So, hey, Michelle, how are you doing? Good. How are you? Oh, I can't hear you. Can you talk again? I'm good. How are you? Oh, there we go. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, so Michelle, tell me, tell me what's the goal here. Are you trying to contact your landlord so that you can get some abatement or you can get, you know, lower your rent payments? What's the goal? Sent an email. Um, we are, we can have, so the goal is to see if we can get at least a three month, either abatement or if we can have like a discounted rent for the next couple of months. We just know we're trying to get through this little bump in the road and without having to close our doors. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things, uh, a couple of our members actually, who literally have like their, their landlord has gone like super silent, like nothing, like nothing at all is they, this is extreme, um, but they removed all the money from the bank account that their lease, that their lease was coming out of so that their lease payment wouldn't come out of the account. Uh, so they wouldn't actually pay for rent because there was no money in the account to pay for it. Uh, and in two out of three cases, the landlord contacted them to work out an agreement. Uh, so that's like worst case scenario, right? Like if they're, if they're not, you know, if you're emailing every day, if you're texting every day, you know, I'm, I'm the king of persistence. Like if I want something, I'll do everything I can to, you know, to make it happen. Uh, that, that would be like your, your work, not worst case scenario, but that's like your extreme, the extreme measure to take all the money out. They wouldn't be able to take the rent and then they would probably contact you. And if they didn't contact you, um, they probably don't need the money at the moment. Must be nice. Yes. Right. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the only advice I have around that, but I, I hope that gives you an option. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Good to talk to you. Um, David, hey David, if this uncertainty with the coronavirus continues long term, meaning two years, okay, that is long term, what steps must we studio owners take? We may need to reduce our class size permanently, space out our um, yep classes so there's time between them. Uh, yes, change to prepare. Yeah, great, great question. So essentially, like if this lasts, and even if it's not like two years, David, even if it's like two months, like let's say that in July. They say, okay, you can now open your space. Uh, they'll have some stipulations. You can't have more, more than 10 people in the space at the same time, right? You're then going to have to look at different practices. So drop up, uh, drop off only. So like no one sitting in the lobby, like someone standing at the front of your studio, taking attendance, uh, you know, someone stand, you know, no, um, parents can only interact via email or like live chat or telephone calls. Like they book a call with you on Calendly where they used to like come in and talk to you in the office. Now they book a call online if they want to talk to you or, or to one of your team members. You may need to, you all were doing hand sanitizer before. Then may, you may need to be provided, uh, providing face masks uh, at the studio. Uh, you will need to relook at choreography. If you're going back to do 
recital work or, or concert work, you'll need to remove any partner work that was, in, you know, included. You'll need to remove any choo-choo trains where the kids are like holding their shoulders and, you know, tapping around in a circle, right? So any physical contact, you'll need to take that out of your, out of your lesson plans. You'll need to train the students that they don't hug the teachers, that the teachers don't hug the students, uh, you know, skipping around in a circle to celebrate someone's birthday, holding hands, that will need to change. So anything that has physical contact inside of the classroom will need to be ab abbreviated. Um, and this, like, just, just my kind of belief is this will happen, this will need to happen until there's a vaccine right? It'll need to happen. There'll be antibody tests. We know that they're slowly starting to roll out. And so some people will feel very comfortable kind of going out because they've got the antibodies to like not get it and to fight and to fight it. Um, but my belief is the majority of people will be feeling a little uneasy going back into the normal dance studio environment. And so what you need to be doing, and, and I ran a bit of a session on this about two weeks ago, inside of the IC is you before you go back, you need to be telling your parents like a month before you go back all of the things that you are putting in place so you start warming them up to the idea that your studio is going to be a safe place for them to come back to because you've got to think about it. If they say 1st of July you can open your dance studio in some capacity, right, you can't announce to your parents on the you know 30th of June saying hey guys we're going back tomorrow and expect that they're like yeah cool okay we'll come back you've got to make sure that you have spent a good few weeks sharing with them what you're doing so that their child or, or that themselves is going to be as protected as possible in the studio and I think the CDC and stuff will, will give you some outlines depending on what country you're in around best practices um, you know, I was reading an article the other day around like how like how is how are the gyms going to operate after this? And there was an opinion piece around people will have to like book time slots to go in for their workout. So the gym won't be able to have more than 10 people in the gym and there'll be like a schedule where you can book in and say, OK, I'm going to book in for this hour. I'm going to be at the gym from nine to ten o'clock. Uh, we have schedules already inside of our studios, but we're going to be need to be really careful, especially if you've got multiple rooms. You're going to need to be careful around the trends, the transition of if you've got five rooms running and you've got ten kids in every room. Uh, that's fifty. That's fifty kids. They can't all come out at the same time and be in the lobby, right? So then your schedules are going to need to change so that there's no overlapping. Uh, of, of kids, depending on what guidelines they put in place. But these are the things that, and it's a great question from David, these are the things that we need to just start thinking about so that when they say, guys, you can open your doors, that you that you are prepared and that you have some, some resources um, and some systems already in place. Thank you for joining us for this special podcast. To access our virtual dance studio training resources and receive continued support in the Dance Studio Owners Association, join our coaches and community at dsoa.com forward slash join or email us at hello at dsoa.com.